Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. MDA, or the Muscular Dystrophy Association, is the largest source of funding for neuromuscular disease research outside of the federal government here in the United States, committed more than a billion dollars in funding since their inception. Joining us on the program is the president and CEO, Lynn O'Connor Voss. Welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Neil. My pleasure. Well, um, you're going to talk to us today about the work that the uh, the MDA does, uh, doing funding research for uh, neuromuscular diseases. What is it that you do other than the obvious? Sure. Uh, Muscular Dystrophy Association, as you probably know, is put on the map by Jerry Lewis um, over, and we've been around for about 68 years. Yes. Um, we are a um, complex and um, a uh, very innovative organization. Um, our, you know, the, at the root of our our world is research. And over the last uh, 68 years, we've invested over a billion dollars in research in neuromuscular medicine. Uh, we represent 43 different diseases in the category, and we also have 150 care centers or clinics around the country, delivering uh, care to over 100,000 patients with these conditions. And so, um, and, and then last but not least, and certainly one of the most uh, exciting and wonderful things that the MDA has always done is we have a camp program every summer where over close to 5,000 children go to camp. And that's an opportunity to really develop um, great independent life skills. Uh, so the, the MDA is um, changing rapidly right now based on what is really cutting edge science. We're finally discovering the genes that cause some of the primary diseases here, and the biotech industry and pharma industry and many researchers are lining up to identify uh, gene replacement therapy and gene therapy mm-hmm. to not just improve outcomes, but potentially cure some of these diseases. You know, when you mentioned um, <clears throat> the, the connection, of course, with, with Jerry Lewis, I mean, the, the Muscular Dystrophy Association has celebrity status, but that celebrity status, as as you pointed out, really is secondary to the things that a lot of people have no idea that is going on, you mm-hmm. know, behind the telethons, behind the, the radiothons, behind the, the ads, as well as how you're combining the scientific and clinical conferences this year. Sure. So I joined the Muscular Dystrophy Association just a year and a half. And uh, my background is I was in pharmaceutical marketing and communications and healthcare. And when I joined, um, it became very clear that you're right. You know, this organization was known for servicing patients um, and supporting them in any way possible. And for the, all those years uh, with the telethon, um, there really wasn't anything to offer patients. And now, you are, you know, really hitting a a moment in time where there's three drugs on the market. There will be up to seven or eight in the near future. And, you know, again, when you think about any other healthcare um, area with 43 different diseases and 250,000 people in the United States affected by these diseases, it's kind of shocking how few drugs are on the market. So it really is um, a turning point. And uh, one of the most exciting uh, times, I think, in any disease category where you're going to see a, almost an avalanche of, of activity and hopefully some wonderful new treatments that will change people's lives. Um, and, you know, because we're on TV, and this is before I joined, but certainly everybody knows the telethon, um, you know, the brand image was really very much service um, and and loving care and empathy. And I think we are really moving pretty rapidly to an opportunity to talk about innovations in science and innovations in care. So our mission now is we're committed to transforming the lives of individuals with neuromuscular disease, and that includes muscular dystrophy and ALS. And we do that through innovations in science and innovations in care. Um, and uh, the conference is, is really just uh, brings that whole um, idea to life. So in the past, there was always a research conference. Uh, it became very obvious when we had kind of record uh, attendance last year. You know, the, the, the intersection of research and clinical are, are becoming closer and closer. Um, and in fact, in this kind of uh, rare disease space between research and care, in uh, clinical care, because really almost every patient, uh, given the fact that there's so much clinical research going on out there, will be introduced to some sort of research out there. So uh, the, the conference is very exciting. Uh, it's coming up um, in, in um, April. 
Uh, and Monday, April 15th is our opening, um, and it ends on the 17th. Um, it's a, a spectacular, um, everyone's attending really in the industry, which is incredible. We have over 1,200 people scheduled to be there. Um, and the opening, uh, which is on Monday morning, we're, we're really proud to have Janet Woodcock there to kind of set the stage. Um, she's extremely eager to um, talk about rare disease, talk about the drug development, talk about ways that the FDA can support the uh, the introduction of, of, of appropriate care for, for patients with neuromuscular disease. And, and followed by that, there will be an FDA panel, including Peter Marks from the Center for Biologics. Um, so we're we are, you know, really happy to know to uh, report that this will be probably the first time um, a conference like this opens with some significant uh, speakers from the FDA, as well as, of course, we have the thought leaders from the community. And it will will end that morning, which I think will be very powerful, with uh, a wonderful patient voice uh, seminar with five of our key ambassadors, um, children and uh, young adults. And, and adults who are living with neuromuscular disease, and we're really going to give an, give the audience an opportunity to hear firsthand um, how some of these individuals who are currently receiving some of the products that are out there um, are are developing, you know, kind of life changing events that are happening for them with their disease, and they're able to do so much more than they used to um, prior to drugs like Spinraza. It seems that it makes perfect sense to combine the research sector and the clinical sector. Do you think that this is a model that's going to be adopted in other areas of research, having been first adopted by by the MDA, such a huge and influential organization adopting such a model for conferences? Do you think that, you know, on, on the cancer scale, on the uh, HIV scale, that maybe researchers mm-hmm. and clinicians will get together and accelerate the progress? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't also mention that we have over 200 abstracts, uh, which is uh, about uh, twice as many abstracts as last year. So this is a category where many, many more researchers are coming in, and that's not just basic academic research, but all the way through clinical research. And for the first time, we have a convention area uh, where we have uh, many pharmaceutical companies and technology companies actually exhibiting. So, um, you know, the intersection of care and research in this category is critical. I think it's also probably true in some of the other big uh, uh, organizations like ASCO, where you, you do have a combination uh, coming uh, happening there. Uh, what, what, what we really see here is it's the first time where um, this category is getting big enough and important enough that you need to have a, a solid convention. We need to have everyone there in one room. As I mentioned, this affects um, – 250,000 people. It's also a category that costs the United States $46 billion. And so, um, you know, there's just so many um, hot topics that need to be covered. Uh, Gene replacement therapy, uh, genetic discovery, newborn screening. Uh, For the first time, you're going to see, because there are therapies on the market, the uh, government has now approved newborn screening for SMA, for example. And so when you start to think about newborn screening, we're going to have so many more babies identified early. And if we have therapies available for them at the same time, we really have a big shot at uh, curing some of these diseases like SMA. So you're right. On this conference, um, I think this is, um, this is uh, where the world is going to be going, um, particularly when with, with uh, again, years of no therapy, most patients that have these conditions will be candidates for some research. And the intersection of clinical care and research uh, is kind of inextricably linked when you have a category like this. Well, thanks for coming in. Where can we go uh, online and learn more? Uh, MDA.org. Please come to our site. You'll see all kinds of information there about our diseases and also all kinds of activities that are happening around the country uh, to drive funds uh, for our, our programs. It's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. 
Your patronage of even just one dollar a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.